so wizarding. Like, hi, this is Pitney from Pitney and Amelia's Bitchin' Boutique, and you're listening to the So Wizard Podcast. Broadcasting very fast and very dangerous from the planet Malastare, you are listening to So Wizard. You are thinking, you said people gonna die? The only podcast to make the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs. There'll be no one to stop us this time. What's going on, everybody? It is time for episode number 251 of the So Wizard podcast. I'm your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-hosts, the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield. Kicking names and taking ass. (laughs) And the expert mr marquis markellis reagan hello hello in podcast land hello ladies (laughs) you are listening to so wizard podcast three friends discuss the world of nerd podcasting weekly this week we're going to talk a little bit of news and new trailers and then we're going to jump right into a review of disney's live action remake of aladdin but before we get into all that how is everyone doing this week aubrey what's going on Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Huh. All right. Not a single thing. Well, that's good. More time to concentrate on podcasting and nerd news. Mm-hmm. Mark Ellis Regans, how are you today? Uh, I heard he's doing fine. I don't know the guy, personally. <laughs> how about you, Mark Ellis? How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I haven't been up to anything either. Just uh, uh, watched some movies, did some reviews, edited some podcasts. Nothing too uh, amazing. No problem. I wish I also had anything even remotely interesting to report. But uh, yeah, I mean, in my second job, a couple people won't be down for breakfast. So I've been picking up extra hours there and I literally have done nothing except work. Nothing except work and sleep at all for the last like five or six days. Other than like sneaking in a screening of Aladdin with my son. That's it. That was literally the one thing. <laughs> that your daughter didn't want to go see it? No, not even a little bit. Wow. They grow up so fast. They do. And I, I was thinking when I saw it that, uh, wow, if Janine was like six or seven, like she'd be all over oh, this. But yep. uh, now she's not even remotely interested. But <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. I didn't think uh, my son would be interested at all. I thought this was going to be a movie where I sneak out at m- Friday morning before I go to bed after work and see it for a matinee. But uh, he, when we saw the preview during Detective Pikachu, he's like, I want to see that. I, I like Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the selling point. The, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah. Well, he loves the memes and stuff from uh, Will Smith as a genie. So he's like, I, I want to see that for the memes. I'm like, okay, it's wow. fine. Great. I don't want him to become a sleazy stripper when he gets older. So you don't want to be like, no, you can't go. But at the same time, it's like, fuck, man. I just wanted to like go bang this out quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not like make a production out of it. But it's okay. We got to see it. And then I went back to bed and then I went to work. So it was great. Nice. But that's really it. I wish I had anything more interesting to report. So I guess uh, we'll just jump right into social media. Mark Ellis, why don't you tell the listeners where they can find more So Wizard Podcast? All right. So everybody can go to SoWizardPodcast.com where you will find new episodes every week. Uh, You'll find some movie reviews from yours truly, Netflix and Amazon streaming picks from our buddy, the awesome Adam Wallyhawk. Uh, You'll also find our merchandise there. You can purchase some of our Soul Wizard t-shirts. Look good while you're representing the show. Uh, A great way to support our show is by doing your Amazon shopping through the link that we keep right on the website. Uh, Go to soulwizardpodcast.com. Click on the big A, the Amazon logo. Do your Amazon shopping. Get your products, and that way you'll be helping out our show. Uh, You can also find our social media links there on the website. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so get at us. Uh, You can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review while you're there. Uh, You can also find us on the Stitcher Radio app for your tablet or smartphone, Podbean, Google Play Music, and you can stream our show through Spotify. Uh, You can also uh, stream our show through Podcoin, where listening to our show can earn you points, and those points you can turn into money. Uh, You can also support our show through our Patreon uh, website patreon.com backslash so wizard podcast receive bonus content from us here so wizard for a small donation uh that oh shout out to all of our podcasting buddies all over the world back to you joey I 
Joseph or Creek B. Do you all hear me out there in Dimension 1218's Earth? I am usually kind, supportive, and sincere. Never, ever, ever, ever <laughs> misconstrued me again. I was debating whether I wanted to play that whole clip, and I just couldn't stop it. Just let it go. Just let it happen. <laughs> Never misconstrued me, Mark. Fantastic. Well, let's jump into the news. Let's see what's going on in the world of nerd this week. Yo, pump it up. It's time for the news. Yo, we getting ready to bring you the news, boy. Okay, so this week in nerdy news, uh, there was a couple of items that dropped. Nothing too big, just a few little tidbits here and there. Uh, there is a rumor uh, from MC. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know the name of the website, but this guy has been pretty on point when it comes to his rumors regarding the Marvel universe. Apparently, there is a few different plans to bring Deadpool into the MCU. There is obviously they want to make a Deadpool three because that uh, the second one did pretty well. Uh, there's also a rumor of them bringing it to the Disney Plus app, and a final rumor of them possibly bringing him into Spider Man three. Now, I like Deadpool just where he is uh, with the Disney Fox merger. I think leaving him alone in Deadpool 3 is fine. Uh, but I just wanted to know if you guys thought that either of these options were good, uh, especially the Disney Plus and the Spider-Man 3, which seems way out of left field. But like I said, this guy's rumors are, are usually pretty accurate. So uh, let's go around the room. Let's start with you, Aubrey. How do you want to see Deadpool brought into the MCU if you want to see him brought in at all? I don't know. I, uh, I would hope that the MCU would acquire the rights to X-Men and that would be how you kind of merge them together. Cause you've already seen the X-Men in the Deadpool movies. Yep. I don't know if merging him into a Spider-Man movie is the correct way to go. Cause Spider-Man is still kind of wholesome and Deadpool is the complete opposite. So I feel like out of all of the movies, that one would be kind of the most unappealing for me. So I I don't know how I would like to see it happen, but I think that X Men would be the easiest route. Just have them make the regular X Men movies and bring Deadpool in that way. Yeah, yeah. If they could slowly transition him in, because I think adding him into a Spider Man movie is just going to be you have wholesome Peter Parker and then turn around and add Deadpool into the mix. It just I don't know. Yeah, apparently this was fueled because there is a ongoing comic book right now for Deadpool and Spider Man, and uh, it's doing pretty well supposedly. <laughs> Joey, how about yeah. you, man? Do you want to see Deadpool in the MCU and how you want to see them uh, work him in there? Yes, I want to see Deadpool in the MCU. How I want them to get him there, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I really am a fan of the idea of them just making Deadpool 3 and now he's in the MCU and maybe make a joke here and there about it. And yeah. that's it. <laughs> and just hand wave it away. Like, uh, I think out of all the characters in movies, I think that Deadpool just randomly existing in the MCU for no reason without an explanation perfectly works with the tone of those movies. I, I don't I don't know. I don't need a serious explanation. I don't need his origin again. I don't need any of that stuff. Just plop them in. You could say uh, something happened with the Infinity Stones. I don't know. Yeah. I just think for the tone of those movies, I think it's fine. Just to have even you can need meta commentary. You know, it's fine. It's like, uh, you know, I had to switch over to a studio that doesn't suck or whatever. You know, get away <laughs> from these bad old X-Men movies. It's fine. I don't know how you put him on Disney Plus unless it's watered down because I know that they're not doing anything above PG-13 on the streaming service. So I think like Star Wars and Marvel movies is about the height of what they're going for in terms of edgy content. <laughs> So right. I don't know how you get Deadpool on there unless it's severely watered down. I would love to see him interact with Spider-Man. I don't want it in a standalone Spider-Man movie, though. Um, we've already got two Spider-Man movies, two movies with uh, Spider-Man teaming up with the Avengers and, and whatnot, and two regular Spider-Man movies. I, I'd rather just have S Spider-Man 3 be Spider-Man 3, and that's it. Like, it doesn't have to be <laughs> introducing Deadpool. Um, that comic is great, though, and the, the interaction between the two of them is, is fantastic, but I just I just don't want it in a Spider-Man 3. Uh, it could be an own standalone movie afterwards or something. That's fine. But I, I don't know. I feel like if you put Deadpool in that movie, he takes over that movie and takes it away from Spider-Man when it should be the third movie of Spider-Man's trilogy and not Deadpool also featuring sometimes Spider-Man. Right. Right. You know, it's funny you should say that because um, 
there is a another rumor that's floating around that Sony. Oh God! It, they're obviously they're going to do a Spider Man three, uh, and they really want to try to get Tom Hardy's Venom into Spider Man three. And I'm like, man, mm-hmm. this, <laughs> this sounds familiar. Spider Man three with Venom. Why have I heard that before? I honestly really don't think that's uh, the best idea, but I uh, I can understand why Sony would want to do that. Um, Aubrey, would you be excited to get Tom Holland and uh, Tom Hardy in the same movie together? Be excited just for another movie with Tom Hardy. <laughs> so are you are you anxiously awaiting Venom too? You know, I love the Venom parts of Spider Man. So honestly, I, the whole symbiote storyline and and all that. I I think would be really cool with Tom Holland um, just because he's so, again, wholesome that adding that grittiness of the symbiote um, could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that could be cool. Joey, what about you? Do you think would you rather have a Venom 2 or Venom make his appearance in Spider-Man 3? I don't want Venom anywhere near (laughs) Spider-Man. (laughs) <laughs> or the uh, or the MCU, but I don't think we're going to have a choice at some point. So it's fine. Again, I thought Venom was OK. The best parts of Venom were Tom Hardy as Venom. Right. So maybe taking him out of like 2004's hottest superhero movie and getting him into a film put together by people that actually will make a good modern superhero movie would work. I just I, I don't the whole Venom storyline is now just fucked because it's supposed to go from it being Spider-Man's costumed, uh, Venom being a bad guy. Like right. we, we've jumped over all of that to get to Woody Harrelson in a bad wig. <laughs> so I, I don't know. But who, who am I to judge? You know, Sony's going to do what Sony wants to do at the end of the day. So mm, I honestly, now that I think about it, I don't care what they do. I just want Woody Harrelson in that red wig. That's all I want. Just give me a movie with that, and I'm fine. That's all you want? This all- is Woody Harrelson wig cinematic universe? That's all I want. That's all. Did he wear a wig in the All in the Family uh, remake they did? No. No, he didn't. I guess that was before he went to jail and started growing his hair out. <laughs> all right. So um, in other MCU news, uh, Power Pack is in active development. Uh, Power Pack based on a comic book that I, I honestly... I remember I liked it, and I remember I read it like years ago, but man, you put a gun to my head, I wouldn't be able to tell you anything about it. Uh, But I do remember enjoying it uh, when it did come out a little while ago. Uh, Power Pack being an active development is nothing new. Runaways was in development for like, it feels like 20 years before it made the TV show. But I think this could be a cool idea. Little kids as superheroes. Um, We don't really have enough of those right now other than Tom Holland. Uh, So what do you think of a power pack? And how would you want to see it as a a movie or a Disney Plus TV show? Let's start with Joey. Oh, man. Um, I I think it would be great as either. Yeah. Um, Man, it would be cool as a movie because you could do this as, you know, this is this is what we've been looking for, Mark. This is the, you know, tween slash, you know, not babies, but not teenage kid like action adventure movie we've been waiting for. Yeah. (laughs) It's got it all. It's got kids with superpowers. It's got aliens. It's got explosions. It's tied to the MCU. This is the one. This is the one. And you could eventually bring in Franklin Richards later on down the down the road. But I I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with it. But this has been one that's been kicking around for a long time. I think this is one of the original properties they when they got their first loan to make Marvel Studios that they had been thinking about. Oh, yeah. You might be right. I do kind of remember that. Yeah. Is Iron Man was in there, uh, which they've made Hulk, Shang Chi, uh, and Power Pack were definitely mentioned. So this, this is going to happen. It's just a matter of how. Uh, TV show will be fine. I just there's so many TV shows at this point. I can't keep up with all these TV shows. <laughs> a movie's a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aubrey, are you familiar with Power Pack at all? Not, not really. And it would be kind of cool as a TV show, but I can't imagine that it would be interesting as a movie. Yeah, I think four little kids doing like superpowers like big budget superpower shit i think that would actually be kind of cool uh, not that joey you mentioned it yeah i think i want a movie now i change i change my vote i want a movie not a tv show all right so then in sequels that uh, nobody asked for ridley scott is threatening to make another alien movie uh, a sequel to alien covenant called supposedly is going to be called alien awakening and this will be the third part of the prequel trilogy then this one will lead right into the events of the very first alien movie uh, the thing that struck me about reading this article is that ridley scott wanted to focus more on the engineers and with the ai life that uh that uh michael fassbender was playing with david and kind of move away from the xenomorphs uh which 
struck me as odd because it's an Alien franchise. Why would you move away from the Aliens? Uh, but that's just my opinion. Now, I know how much you guys love the second movie. Are you psyched that there's going to be a sequel to Alien Covenant? Let's start with Aubrey. Fuck no. Aubrey, what would we have to do to get you to go see Alien Covenant Part 2? I'm going to see it anyway, but I think that this is going to be trash. Absolute trash. Yeah, third time's the charm, maybe. I don't know about that. All right, Joey, what about you, man? Third time's the charm. You think Ridley Scott's going to be able to pull this one off or what? What the heck? I thought Disney was supposed to fix this stuff. They're... What is this? Why are they making this? Ridley Scott wants to do it, man. You let the you let Ridley Scott do what Ridley Scott wants to do. Right. He's got such a great track record in the last few years, so... <laughs> Um, no, I'm not interested at all. Of course, we'll go see it for the podcast if it comes out. I feel an obligation to see this stuff as a huge fan of the first two movies, but it's hard to even get worked up over it being terrible because when was the last time there was a good Aliens movie when I was nine years old? (laughs) What does it matter at this point? Can anything possibly be worse than Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, Prometheus, and Alien Covered in Shit? Like, that's a lot of bad movies. (laughs) It's mm-hmm. like, what does it even fucking matter at this point? I am excited, hopefully, to see what musical instrument David <laughs> teaches himself in this one. I really hope it's a tuba. There you go. Purse your lips and put them here. <laughs> and I will do the fingering. And then it's like... Aubrey, what musical instrument should David teach himself in the next movie? The kazoo. <laughs> nice. Just blow. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Ellis, what musical instrument should he teach himself in the next movie? I'm thinking like a slide whistle. <laughs> <laughs> the <pan> didgeridoo. <laughs> yes, a giant didgeridoo would be perfect. <laughs> you blow in here and I will do the fingering. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. So um, I honestly don't think this movie is actually ever coming out, uh, but it's it's nice. It's a nice idea that, that you know, they want to placate Ridley Scott and be like, yeah, yeah, we'll make your next Alien movie, dude. Whatever. It's, it's probably not going to happen. All right. So then speaking of sequels that no one really, really asked for again, we got our first look at some footage from the new Terminator movie. Terminator Dark Fate. This one is different from the last one in that Linda Hamilton is returning as Sarah Connor. I'm I'm assuming that they're just going to forget three, four, and five happened and just say this is a sequel to part two. Uh, I'm going to save my thoughts to the end. What did you think of the trailer? Let's start with you, Joey. Um... I th- it was kind of underwhelming. I got to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I think the the oomph of oh, it's it's old Arnold has that's gone. That's wasted now. You wasted that on Terminator gynecological exam. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, Linda Hamilton looks like uh, the year twenty sixty seven Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> With the uh, not not like all the wrinkliness but or the leatheriness, but when she has the big uh, glasses on, the big sunglasses yep. and the short hair, it looks like Aubrey. <laughs> all I could think is like, I'm not watching any fucking horror movies. And she's like <laughs> trying to kill us. She, right? she says that as she's like cocking a shotgun in one hand. <laughs> Done with you guys. <laughs> no more fucking podcasts. <laughs> um I don't know. Gabriel Luna looks cool as the Terminator. I mean, it's not tough. He just has to kind of walk around and look angry. Um, but I did like him as Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. The uh, girl from Blade Runner as the hero Terminator is really weird looking. I don't understand what's happening there. Um, the CG on the plane scene at the end of the trailer looked really bad. Yeah. But again, much like I said about Alien, like what what hell is there to really die on for Terminator? The first two are absolute masterpiece classics, and there hasn't been a good one since I was a freshman in high school. So whatever. If it sucks, it sucks. If it's good, it's good. That'd be great. I'd be very happy if it was good and we got a trilogy of awesome Terminator movies. Yeah. But if it doesn't, I'm not going to walk out of the theater like cursing existence. It's just, oh, well, another bad Terminator movie. <laughs> All right, Aubrey, what about you? What did you think of this trailer? I haven't watched any Terminator movies in a very long time. Um, so I have no idea like, what's happened from the 90s to now. Mm-hmm. It looks okay. I mean, I'll watch it on FX Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't think you're going to see it in the theater? 
No, I know I'm going to have to go see it. Because, uh... Well, I'm afraid I'm... I've got some bad news. It kind of reminds me of that movie that we went and saw with Ryan Gosling. I can't remember the freaking name of it. Blade Runner? Yes, Blade Runner. <laughs> it reminds me of Blade Runner, in a sense. I don't know why. Maybe it's just, like, the sci fi ness Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mm. I guess we'll see. It's got James Cameron, so, you know. <sighs> yeah... Yeah, I, I I am honestly getting really sick of here's a new Terminator because I feel like, you know, fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Shame on me again. Fool me three times like this. It looks just like the last trailer, the la- like the one for uh, Terminator Genesis. There's like a twist in the story. There's a big aircraft that crashes into something else at the end. It looks crappy. I feel like I've we've danced this dance before james cameron giving in the thumbs up i feel like we've done this already so i'm not excited at all the thing that excited me most about the trailer is that they used a bjork song in the trailer which i thought was really cool because i haven't heard that song in years oh that was whack we didn't even get the terminator music oh yeah well you that's this one was just a teaser they're gonna save that for the real trailer when they start showing like the uh the cg arnold's like a thousand like cg arnold's running over a hill or something i don't know if you can't make a, a good terminator movie with khaleesi then uh why bother I quit. Seriously. Uh, so then speaking of trailers for sequels that we still don't really need, there was a leak this week for the Rambo 5 trailer, Rambo Last Blood, uh, that did appear at the uh, Cannes Film Festival. And it shows Rambo uh, back home. And I believe someone gets kidnapped and they're coming after him. So it's kind of it kind of reminded me of like Home Alone, you know, with, with Rambo as Kevin Mc- McAllister. Uh, I, I don't know. Sh- Stallone can can do no wrong after the last two Creed movies, so I'll give him a pass. I'll go see it, but I, I, there's nothing about it that's really drawn me into it. But what did you guys think of it? Uh, let's start with you, Joey. Man, I hate to be Debbie Downer this week, but I, I thought this looked kind of whack. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, it was a blurry, leaked uh, trailer filmed on someone's potato phone, but I didn't see a hook or anything that made me say, thank God Rambo is back. <laughs> I, I really liked the last one. Where he like killed like nine thousand million people with a gun attached to a jeep. Um, <laughs> There's like chunks of meat just like flying everywhere, flying everywhere. Like somebody's off camera throwing raw meat up in the air. <laughs> like, it was great. I really liked that last one, and it had Julie Benz in it. Yep. So really, you can't go wrong there. But I, I don't. I don't know. Is anybody clamoring for this? Like, is there any like groundswell that we must see a final Rambo adventure? At least it's just him uh, taking on Mexican cartel people instead of the rumored fifth Rambo where he was going to fight an alien monster. Right, I remember that. Oh, thank God someone came to their senses before the cameras rolled on that one. But I kind of almost wish we had gotten something ridiculous no. like that. <laughs> that would have been kind of silly, but I, I'm fine. Whatever. I'm going to go see it, obviously. I love Stallone. He's done really good movies in the last few years. I mean, there's been a couple like weird direct-to-video things that he's made, but you know, Rocky Balboa was great. The Rambo 4 was great. The two Creed movies, great, great, great. So I'll give it a chance. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't really feel any excitement. I feel like so indifferent. It's, it's not even funny. Mm-hmm. All right, Arby, what about you? How do you feel about Rambo 5? Have you seen any of the Rambo movies? I did. Whoa. I did. I really liked First Blood. Yep. I like Sylvester Stallone, too. I, I like him in um, Expendables. I like him in any movie I've really seen him in, actually. So I don't, I don't think that I'll hate the new Rambo, honestly. I don't. I just don't see it. I, he's never made anything that I've hated. So yeah. I'm not, like, chomping at the bit to see it. But mm-hmm. I would feel more confident if I knew, like, the directors were, like, the guys who did John Wick or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, if they were attached to it, I'd be like, yes, bring it on. But no. All right. So then, and uh, again, another trailer for a sequel that I don't know if anyone really asked for it. We are getting Jean-Luc Picard back on the screen in Picard. It's a teaser for the uh, CBS All Access streaming service where we got our first look at Patrick Stewart as Jean-Luc who quit Starfleet and is now making wine. And the big question is, what happened that was so bad that made him leave Starfleet? Aubrey, you were the Star Trek uh, aficionado on the show. What did you think of this teaser? Oh, I loved it. I loved every second of it. It almost makes me want to get the streaming service because I love 
absolutely next generation hands down my favorite star trek ever jean-luc picard is just amazing he is one of my favorite characters he is so complex in the show too that to see a show about him is just take all my money and use it to fund this now, what are, are you hoping, do you have any hopes for the show at all? Like, is there a storyline that you want to see old Jean-Luc go through? Not really. I, I'm willing to see him do anything because I think that he's just amazing as a character. And any decision that he's ever made has been so intelligent that it's it's just, it's crazy. He, there was one episode that I watched of The Next Generation, which I'm sure ever touched everybody because it's such a different episode where he gets um like there there's a tractor beam on the enterprise and it infects jean luc with almost like a coma and he goes like back in time and he has a family and everything and he sets off like this thing that shows the story of these people and how this planet became extinct and everything and seeing him have a family and be that type of family man was so different from Jean-Luc as a character throughout the entire next generation that it, it almost made you cry because it was such a different episode so seeing him living his life the way that he would like to to his fullest potential and and being happy is really just that's exciting for me to be able to see that <laughs> so what if it's just like six episodes of him like on his farm like sipping wine going yeah i and i would still be so happy <laughs> that episode where he um is in a coma is actually a, a longer episode i believe or at least it feels longer and it's really just watching him have a family it's a, there's really no crazy action to that episode. It's really just watching him have a family, and it's a beautiful episode. Nice. Nice. All right. Joey, how do you feel about Jean-Luc Picard coming back on Star Trek? I don't care at all. I hate Star Trek. <laughs> That's what I figured. Sorry to be a Debbie Downer again this week, but I just, I'm not a Star Trek fan in any way, shape, or form. So, though I have been constantly told by people that I should watch uh, Deep Space Nine. Okay. Which is the Star Trek one with uh, Avery Brooks as a captain. Yeah, yeah. And they're on a space station. Yep. Somebody told me that it was pretty, it was closer to like Battlestar Galactica or The Expanse. It wasn't as Star Trekky, and that I might like it and I should give it a chance. But <laughs> Star Trek, I'm not fucking watching that. Uh, Aubrey, what was the show that had Seven of Nine on it? Voyager? Yes. Was it Voyager? Yes. I remember Seven of Nine, but I can't remember her face face at all <laughs> we all remember seven of nine. <laughs> i was gonna say maybe that's the show you should be watching joey uh no that's okay i'll skip it i just i just want to show with picard stuck in his barn with a bunch of uh bad guys trying to break in and him like uh killing them off one by one be amazing <laughs> picard last blood that's all i want and then tom hardy comes in as his younger self <laughs> he kicks open the door take that dress off <laughs> <laughs> You guys are have some really weird ideas for TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a, a couple of smaller things. Uh, we're getting Akira in 2021. Taika Waititi. Allegedly. No, no, no. This is for real. Taika, Taika Waititi, is, it's official. Taika Waititi is directing Akira, and it is scheduled for Warner Brothers to come out May 21st, 2021, the same weekend as John Wick 4. Oh, God. One of those, first of all, one of those movies is going to move. Second of all, I trust Taika Waititi to make something awesome because I don't think he's made a bad movie yet. And three, I'll believe a live action Akira exists when I'm sitting in the theater watching it. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not going to be Leonardo DiCaprio in Neo Manhattan. So. Hey, he's producing it, so you never know. He might pop in. Yikes. It'd just, it'd just be a quick whip pan to him and he'll say, you know, you, you have my attention. <laughs> you have my curiosity, <laughs> not you have my attention. And that's the only time you see him in a whole movie. Oh, God. Well, if it's going to be that ridiculous. I, I just want to see his next movie before I see anything else. That's I'm really excited about Taika Waititi's next movie. So. Yeah, supposedly he was going to do a documentary about Bubbles the Chimp for uh, Michael Jackson, but uh, he pulled out of that. So now Akira is, the green light is ready to go. Yeah, his next movie is him as Adolf Hitler. Right. <laughs> as as a, who is also friend, right? some kid's imaginary friend. <laughs> Genius. It sounds amazing. <laughs> All right, so Aubrey, now that Akira is pretty much official, are you ready for it? Are you psyched for it? Yeah, I like Taika Waititi, so I think he'll do a great job. Can't oh. wait for everybody to be walking around yelling, Tetsuo! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> for like months after it's a big hit. All right. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for the news. Awesome. Well, let's uh, take a quick break. Then we're going to come back and review Disney's live action remake of Aladdin. Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope you're having fun listening to this episode of So Wizard Podcast. But did you know you can actually get paid just for listening to us? I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. We've just discovered a new app called PodCoin, and it literally pays you to listen to podcasts. Here's how it works. You listen to the podcast you love, and you earn PodCoin while you listen. Then you turn that PodCoin in for gift cards at places like Amazon or Starbucks, or if unlike me, you're a good person, you could actually donate it to charity. The more you listen, the more you earn. Here's what you got to do. Download the free app right now on your iPhone or Android device. And I've got a special code for you. Simply use our code WIZARD when you sign up and you'll get 300 PodCoin just to start off. If you listen to enough of us on there, you can get a drink at Starbucks or an Amazon gift card. And it's like I gave it to you. So go ahead, go listen to this podcast or any of your other favorite shows on PodCoin and sign up with the code WIZARD. It'll change the way you listen to podcasts. All right, we're back, and it's time to talk about Aladdin. First, we're going to go non-spoiler, then we'll let you know when spoilers coming with a sound drop in case you haven't seen Aladdin or you didn't see it in, like, 1992 (laughs) either. Um, I'm not really sure how you can spoil this movie, but okay. Uh, Let's just go around and see what people thought. Aubrey, what did you think of Aladdin? It was good. That doesn't sound enthusiastic. I didn't hate it. It it was was bittersweet. Okay, okay. Uh, Mark Ellis Regans, what did you think? Uh, he really enjoyed it. He thought <laughs> what it was... did you think of it? <laughs> I was going to refer to myself in third person from now on. Um, okay. No, I liked it. I thought it was actually a good movie. I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed it. Joey? Yeah, I actually am surprised. I kind of liked this movie. Wow. I didn't hate this movie, and I wasn't bored, and uh, I kind of liked it. It wasn't bad. Bad. I'm surprised. I know, because I don't like Disney movies, but... Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything we can say about this movie without going into spoilers? Or should we just jump right in? Is, yeah, I don't know if the, is there spoilers. <laughs> is it really spoilers? That's why I'm like con- con- confused. Is it really spoilers for a movie that is a remake of a movie from like 30 years ago? I don't know. Whatevs. Just play the drop and let's just get talking about it. Spoiler alert! I had seen the future and I had to prevent it. All right. Uh, all right. Well, you know, let's just start with things we liked. Uh, Mark Ellis, what did you like about this movie? What, what stood out to you for Aladdin? You know, as I'm watching a movie, uh, you know, and I I couldn't help but compare this to Beauty and a Beast or the, the efforts that Disney made to take a classic animated movie and turn it into a live action movie. Uh, you know, I, I can tell from watching Beauty and a Beast that, that after what Right as it started, I'm like, okay, this isn't the same thing. They're trying to aim to make it a little bit different, make it new. For Aladdin, within probably like the first five minutes of the movie, I'm like, that's Aladdin, that's Jasmine, this is perfect. They they nailed the casting perfectly. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed the cast. I thought everyone was was spot on perfect, uh, and I really liked Will Smith as the genie, and I really liked that they let him be Will Smith. Uh, so uh, yeah, the casting I think is. The top mark for me uh, in regards to this movie. Okay. And you had seen the original movie that you would multiple times or you were a fan of the first version of this, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I was working at the movie theaters when it came out. (laughs) Arby was probably like in diapers and I, uh, yeah, I watched it like a thousand times and I loved it. I thought it was really good. Disney was on a real, a real good streak when Aladdin came out. It was the third one in their new animated renaissance. And I thought it was I thought it was amazing. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Okay. What about you, Aubrey? Anything that you specifically liked about this movie? Will Smith. Okay. Continue. (laughs) You know, when I first heard that this was going to be a live action movie, and I first heard that Will Smith was going to be the genie, I tried to be really optimistic because I was like, you know what? If, If Robin Williams was alive, the one person he would be so excited to reprise his role would be Will Smith. He, you know, can you just imagine how excited Robin Williams would be if he heard Will Smith was going to play him? So I tried to go into it with that mindset. And then I was a little shaken up with Suicide Squad and everything <laughs> else he's been in lately. I haven't really enjoyed much of his acting lately, uh, Suicide Squad especially. And I've said multiple times in the past, you know, Will Smith is just playing Will Smith. Who's playing Will Smith? Just like stupid fucking, what's his face? Tom. Tom Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah. Stupid ass Tom Cruise. Um, So 
I, I think that that was a highlight for me was Mil- Will Smith absolutely nailed this role. He was so fantastic. I loved it. I, I even liked the changes that they made to the story from the cartoon Aladdin. I, I don't mean, have any idea what those were because I, I can, can't even remember the cartoon. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they changed a couple things like um, the genie. You don't see what happens to the genie after he's freed. You don't see that he gets married, has kids, and has a happy ending. That doesn't happen in the cartoon, and I really liked that part. I liked that they started off with him like telling his kids the story on the boat, uh, and that's how they went into it. So those things I like. I also like. So they Jasmine's mother died. They don't explain that in the cartoon, and then she was of a different country, which they were alliances and there was a lot of politics in that part which is very unlike the cartoon and i liked that i liked that change i liked the party that they went to i liked the genie having feelings for a human i thought that that was really special so those changes that they made in comparison to the cartoon i actually didn't hate and normally i'm a person who hates that so you know if i was locked in a lamp for ten thousand years i'd be trying to hit on her too let's let's put it that way you know (laughs) (laughs) And and Jasmine having a handmaiden was really cool, too. I thought that she was fantastic. She was a great actress. I loved the handmaiden. Mm -hmm. What about you, Joey? Hmm. Well, I have, like, next to zero... um care or interest in the original i don't i i know i've seen it yeah um it was my ex-girlfriend's favorite movie so i know we watched it together at some point but like i can't remember anything about it. <laughs> other than like the base i'm not like it's not like i'm an idiot i know like the the story and i know this the popular songs i just i i couldn't tell you like People are like, oh, they changed this or they added an, I think they added a new song in this. They yeah. added a couple of new songs and I don't know if I liked those though. <laughs> I don't even, I couldn't even tell you what they were. So it was, both of Jasmine's songs. Yeah. Jasmine's <laughs> big, um, I will not be contained mantras that she sung. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I, with zero nostalgia for the original, I just was pretty much walking in cold. And I echo what you guys said. I loved Will Smith in this movie. I thought he was awesome. I thought he did a great job as the genie. And he made it his own, yep. which was part, you know, he just wasn't doing a Robin Williams impersonation. Um, I think my favorite, one of my favorite things in the whole movie was when he sang the whole song about the lamp. And then he's like, okay, so what do I do? He's like, uh, the song was the instruction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yes. Yes, it was. That was really funny. Um, but yeah, he was really funny in this. He was really good. And after all the shit, that we gave this movie for like really bad publicity shots and early trailers. That was one of the best parts of the movie. <laughs> yeah. That seems to be a theme for some of these movies where something will come out and we'll be like, Oh, that looks like shit. And then, you know, like Affleck and Batman when he got right. cast as Batman, it's like, well, he was probably the best thing of that movie. This was a much better movie than Batman versus <laughs> Superman. <laughs> and uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Jasmine for being smoking hot. Seriously. God damn. Damn. That's right. You did go find a genie lamp. <laughs> <laughs> I was rubbing something else in the theater early time. <laughs> Do you, you remember her from Power Rangers? Yeah. Yeah, I remember Power Rangers. Dude, I saw I saw her in Power Rangers, and yeah, I thought she was okay. You know, one of many of the five kids, but I don't know, dude. For some reason, she is like smoking in this movie. That's a, yeah, she, she definitely glowed up. Seriously. That, that's tough, dude, because even the cartoon Jasmine is, you know, aside from being like one of the most popular princesses, for a cartoon, she's pretty hot. Oh, that's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crossing a very weird line, Mark. Well, she is. They didn't draw her ugly. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, Jasmine was smoking hot. Um, and yeah, I thought the movie was fun. It was fine. I know about things you didn't like. Aubrey, you sounds like you may have some things that you didn't like about the movie. I didn't like Jasmine's songs that they Why? had. They were annoying. <laughs> they felt out of place. Um, they felt more like a music video than anything. Yeah. Um, and I didn't like that. Like, that's not how the other songs were. The other songs did not seem like a music video, whereas this one did. They were super out of place. I didn't like it. Yeah. And I understand why they wanted to do that. And I appreciate the fact that they did. And she actually did like a really good job singing that song. But the first time that they did it it was fine i thought it was totally fine the second yeah. time that they did it in the middle of it to like when they literally stopped the movie to give her her own like anthem i 
appreciate the concept and I love the thought behind it, but it stopped the movie cold in its tracks and it felt really out of place. A hundred percent. Yeah. The, f- the first one wasn't nearly as bad. Like I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't, I wasn't as upset about it, but the second one I was definitely like, uh, this really sucks. Yep. And that's what brought it down a little bit for me was, was that because I didn't like it. It was out of place. And I see what they're doing. Jasmine really doesn't have, she doesn't have any of her own songs, honestly, in the cartoon. So I get what they're doing. A lot of the songs that she does are, are a duet, but it just, it wasn't right. It was out of place. What about you, Markellis? Things you didn't like about the movie? It did feel a little long. It felt a little padded out, which is, you know, I understand they have to expand it to make it like movie length. But uh, I don't know, like the original cartoon, obviously, because it's animated, they can make it a lot quicker and keep the story like really, really tight. So it flows really uh, so it flows at a nice pace. This one, it, they padded it out and you can kind of feel it in some spots. And that's the that's the only thing. It, it seemed to take like when a third act should be amping up, it goes on another like kind of detour. And I'm like, oh, why are they? Why is it not heading towards the end? But in you know, I remember it's because that's what they did in a cartoon. And I don't think that it helped this movie a lot. Them being so uh, slavish to the cartoon, to the story in the cartoon in certain aspects. Um, but that's that's the only thing. If, if it had been like a little bit tighter, if they had got it down to under two hours, I think I would have liked it a lot more. The, uh, the, the just. You know, it's kind of the same thing that you said. I loved um, I loved when we were Aladdin was in the market and running around and Indiana Jones jumping off stuff. I loved when he was in the cave. I liked the songs from the original movie. Yep. I really liked when he entered the kingdom as uh, Prince Ali and they did the whole number. I thought that was great. But you're right. It did seem to get a little long. And I, it's, I don't really I didn't really feel like Jafar was really fleshed out enough. Yeah, I think they really just wanted to make him the bad guy. And that's it. Just straight the bad guy and no real like uh, flavor to his character. Well, I mean, it's a kid's movie. I'm not expecting like uh, this to be, you know an Oscar winning endeavor, but it just seemed like he was kind of the bad guy, but not, you didn't really see enough. And then within the span of like 30 seconds, he's the most powerful sorcerer in the universe. And now he's the super ultra bad guy. Yeah. Um, I didn't feel built up enough. I don't know if I would have wanted the movie longer to deal with that, but that was really about it. I mean, there was nothing really, I didn't feel there was anything egregious or terrible about this movie in any way, shape or form. Obviously there was some dodgy CG on the uh, tiger, but that was about it. What? I saw nothing wrong with that at all. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm stretching. This is a very two and a half out of five movie for me. Um, really? So wow. That, well, I mean, there really wasn't anything egregiously bad about it, but it wasn't, I didn't walk out of the theater doing backflips either, but I was surprised <laughs> that it didn't suck balls because I was expecting it to be terrible. <laughs> it's a live action remake of a movie I don't care about by the director of King Arthur. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, so that's what I actually wanted to ask. What did you think about his directing of it? I thought the uh, action sequences were good. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with it at all. I, I really liked that those parts of the movie. So I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, Aubrey, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really have any issues with it either. It wasn't that bad. No. It was better than I thought it'd be. So I can't I can't even really complain about it. I I feel like Guy Ritchie kind of had a, an easy thing to do, though. He just had a movie that he had to remake. <laughs> it's a, copy this do this yeah. <laughs> and don't screw it up yeah yeah i i was worried about his abilities because honestly like you see his other movies and you're like seriously what does this guy know about fucking cartoons and disney and shit but he has kids so clearly he's watched those he had to watch those movies like a billion times and i and i will say there was like i was you know especially after king arthur it's like, god just not good not a good movie um when it got to the halfway point when they're doing like the the whole new world song i'm like son of a bitch guy Ritchie is actually pulling his shit off like he's actually doing it so uh yeah i was very much impressed with his uh his direction uh it, it reminded me that he actually is a really good director right he just makes some poor choices like king arthur or <laughs> marrying madonna <laughs> Yes, but <laughs> Sherlock Holmes and uh, Rock and Roller, fucking awesome. Right, right, right. All right. Any final thoughts on Aladdin before we grade this bad boy? Mark. You know, I still, as the original one is such a classic. Like the original one is five out of five. So this one can, there's no way that there's this movie should really exist. Like if you're not going to make it a six out of five, why even bother? Uh, so the fact that they were able to get it at least entertaining, I'll give them credit for that. When it's time for me to go through my DVDs and break out an Aladdin one, I'm 
I'm going to go for the animated one because that story is, even though it's close to the same, it's way better. All right. And what about you, Aubrey? Any final thoughts? Uh, nothing much except I'm a genie with an attitude. <laughs> um, I was surprised that it didn't suck. <laughs> Yeah. That's the best I can say about it. I, it was it was funny, though. They played a featurette for uh, Toy Story 4 before the movie started. And Colin's like, whoa, John Wick is in Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like uh, not like you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're going to see Toy Story right now. <laughs> know, it's like Toy Story is about to be a lot cooler, but not really. <laughs> All right. Let's get a score here out of five. Zero being the worst or less than zero and five being the best. Aubrey. I would give it a three out of five. All right. Nice. Almost right down the middle. Almost. What about you, Mark Ellis? Yeah. I, you know, I was I was very conflicted. I wanted to give it a 3.5, but I'm going to have to give it a four. I'm going to give it a four out of five. A four? Yeah. That, that seems really high. I know. And, it, and it's not quite that it deserved it, but I was seriously, like halfway through the movie, I was stunned at how well Guy Ritchie was pulling this off. So it's better. It's more than a 3.5 out of me. Not quite a four, but I have to give it between the two. I can't do the, the three quarter mark again. So uh, I'm giving it a four out of five. Wow. Okay. Well, it, I was originally going to go with a two and a half. Yeah. But I'm going to give it an extra 0.25 for Will Smith being awesome in the movie and having a rap song over the ending credits. <laughs> you know, as soon as I started playing, I'm like, holy shit, Joey's going to love this. Uh, <laughs> I listened to about the first like 30 seconds and I'm like, nope, I'm out. I don't even care if there's anything extra at the end. I'm out of here. And uh, I will give it another extra 0.25 for Jasmine being loin achingly hot. Damn right. Which gives me a three out of five for Aladdin. All right. Well, that's Aladdin for <laughs> live action remake from 2019. Let's check out our Patreon feedback question of the week. This week, we wanted to know what Disney movie that hasn't been announced or remade yet should be remade live action. But before we get into the Patreon's responses, what do you guys think? Aubrey, give me a cartoon that needs to be remade from Disney immediately. Hmm. It's an excellent mm. question. Hmm. Peter Pan would be kind of cool. No, because they did Hook, and Hook was just phenomenal. They did uh, They did Pan a couple of years ago with uh, Hugh Jackman as uh, Captain Hook. Yeah, see, I didn't see that because it wasn't that good. Yep. But they did Hook with Robin Williams, and it was the best. Shit, I don't know. Mulan would be kind of cool, too. <laughs> That's coming out. Yeah. You're, you're in luck. Alice in Wonderland. No, they suck. <laughs> they did that They did two I of those, know. and they were terrible. Shit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have one. Oh, all They've right. done everything that I could ask for. <laughs> All your dreams have been fulfilled. <laughs> yeah. I'll remember like as somebody else is answering. All right. What about you, Mark Ellis Regans? Uh, Song of the South. <laughs> <laughs> that, was what, that was what beat him down. Set. I was just kidding. That, sh- that, that should never, ever exist in any form. I don't give a shit. Virtual reality, no form at all. None of it. God, Who's going to play Uncle Remus, though? <laughs> Kanye West. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I want to see our rescuers down under. Can we get oh, a live wow. action version of that? I know that's, that's a deep cut. Either Rescuers Down Under or uh, Michael J. Fox in Atlantis. Oh, Atlantis <laughs> is a good one. Yes. Well, I uh, I picked uh, The Black Cauldron. Never seen that. Oh, it's so good. So good. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's still disney but nice sword and sorcery type of cartoon. I would love to see a live action TV show or movie of that. Uh, I would also allow for Treasure Planet. Really? I got one. Okay. Hercules. Nice. Who's going to play Hercules, though? (laughs) Who do you think? (laughs) Chris Hemsworth. (laughs) What? That has Tom Hardy written all over it. I say Kevin Sorbo is really sad right now. I'm thinking like big and bulky. That's what I'm saying. Though Tom Hardy, he does work out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But Chris Hemsworth is uh, that's a good call, too. Chris Hemsworth is like the new uh, Brendan Fraser from back in the day. <laughs> just, are you telling me Encino Man 2 is coming soon? <laughs> the Encino Man reboot starring uh, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, it's happening. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So let's check out what some of our Patreons had to say. Of course, you can always get involved in the Patreon feedback question by joining our Patreon a dollar a month. Gets you involved in this section of the podcast every week. The shout out and your answer. Uh, let's see, Randy from Colt 45 Podcast, Robin Hood, hmm. which is the animal one where Robin Hood is a fox. You guys remember this movie at all? Yeah. Yes. I used to love that movie. <laughs> that was uh, Adam Wallyhawk's choice as well. 
There's another uh, another hot cartoon character, Maid Marian. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Brandon uh, beat him down from Colt 45, jumped in with Song of the South. Of course. <laughs> Randy came came back with rescuers and <laughs> the rescuers and said, uh, but using people in mouse makeup like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Paul from The Countdown and Maggie from Rock Candy both said The Black Cauldron. Wow, I should probably check this out. Agreeing with me, because why wouldn't anyone agree with me? Notice nobody said Dumbo. Pine of Comics went with Lilo and Stitch. Oh. I love Lilo and Stitch. And it's actually a good idea. And sadly, Amanda does not like Disney live action remakes <laughs> and would not provide a choice. So. <laughs> She's the one that's uh, picketing outside going, no. No, Aladdin, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not my genie. There you go. Excellent. So let's get some recommendations and wrap it up. Aubrey, what do you got for the listeners this week? Uh, I don't even remember what I've done all week. So it's probably best that you just don't even take any recommendations from me. Come back next week. <laughs> How about you, Mark Ellis? Uh, yeah, I started watching a documentary called uh, God of War Raising Kratos. It's all about the making of like the five-year making of the God of War video game. Where uh, the hell was this? It's on YouTube. If you go to the PlayStation channel on YouTube, uh, it's a two-hour documentary all about the uh, the five-year journey of uh, of them trying to make this game. And uh, it, it struck me because I remember we were at a con with Christopher Judge and our friend uh, Lewis from Angry Geeks was uh, moderating it. And I was talking a little bit about God of War. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's actually the guy was actually pretty cool. He's a cool actor. So and I kind of remember the video game from when I worked at Blockbuster. So I figured this would be a uh, a good way for me to get some more information about it. And the fact that it was free on YouTube seemed like a good, uh, you know, you, I, I couldn't beat that at all. So I did start it. I haven't finished it yet. But uh, video game developing is something that I know nothing about. So this is going to be a completely new type of documentary for me. It's on the PlayStation channel on YouTube. It's called God of War Raising Kratos. Awesome. Well, I will suggest that everyone goes to SoWizardPodcast.com where they can find the podcast every week. Links to all our social media accounts on the right-hand side of the page. Movie reviews, streaming picks, so much more. SoWizardPodcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, Podcoin, just about any podcatching app under the sun. If you use it, we're there. Check out our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, search So Wizard Podcast. Adam's dropping weekly videos of new content straight to YouTube. It's free. Check it out. He's got uh, this week, he's continuing looking at Steven Spielberg's filmography. I think he's doing Empire of the Sun this week. And you can always check out his series, The Commute, where he films himself driving to work, talking about something pod culture re related. Uh, last week, he was talking about the Game of Thrones finale. And don't forget to support us on Patreon, patreon.com backslash so is podcast. That's where you can support the show monetarily, get extra episodes every month. Uh, this past month, we did our 20th anniversary retrospective of The Phantom Menace, and we've got ideas percolating for next month, and it may even be a double rewards month, so you definitely want to jump on board. I will recommend absolutely nothing because I haven't done shit. <laughs> Nice. But uh, I am still watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. every week, which has been pretty good this season. Not great, but it's been pretty good. Um, God, did they screw up the uh, timeline with Endgame. So I, I don't I don't even know how they let that fly. But it's hashtag not can really connected anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, fuck it. Who cares? You know, and uh, yeah, and I'm still watching what we do in the shadows, which is I think taken overtaken Umbrella Academy is my favorite TV show of the year at this point. Wow. So we'll see what uh, Stranger Things can bring to the table. But I think uh, what you really should do next week is go see Godzilla King of the Monsters, because that is what we're going to be talking about next week on episode 252 of the podcast. But that's going to do it for episode 251 of the So Wizard podcast. I've been your host, Joey DiCarlo. My co-host, the queen of all nerds, Aubrey Litchfield. Prince Ali. I don't remember the rest of the year. You, you need a genie. Can you foresee? No. You tried your best and failed miserably. <laughs> you tried your best. And the expert, Mr. Marquis Marcellus Reagans. Uh, yeah, Jasmine has my vote for Sultan 2020. Uh, Wakanda forever. <laughs> yeah, I suddenly am completely okay with a female sultan. I don't know what happened. But we'll talk to you guys next week. 
for Godzilla. Rawr! <laughs> Good journey.